Hello everyone, I am Tatiaki Naito, a thoracic oncologist of the Shizuoka Cancer Center, Shizuoka, Japan. This review article features emerging treatment options for cancer-associated cachexia by summarizing the recent clinical trials in this area. According to the previous studies, we now know that cachexia has devastating impact on cancer trajectory. Cachectic cancer patients have decreased physical capacity, poor quality of life, and poor tolerance to cancer treatment. They are easily disabled, stay longer at the hospital, require higher medical costs, and live shorter. How does cachexia cause these unfavorable outcomes? Figure 1 of this paper summarizes the recent understanding of altered muscle metabolism in cachexia. The central pathogenesis is a systemic inflammation that was caused by the tumor itself. Physical inactivity may further enhance the inflammation by attenuating anti-inflammatory effect of the exercise. A lack of amino acids and anabolic stimuli, as well as insulin resistance, result in decreased muscle synthesis. On the other hand, Tumor-derived factors such as proteolysis-inducing factor or mystatin enhance muscle degeneration. Finally, skeletal muscle mass is quantitatively lost. In addition, muscle quality is also lost by physical inactivity and result in physical dysfunction and fatigue, which creates the vicious cycle as shown in this figure. As a result, cachectic cancer patients have poor social, physical, and therapeutic outcomes that was finally associated with short survival time with decreased quality of life. Each component of this pathogenesis is a potential target to improve outcomes in cancer cachexia. We can diagnose cancer cachexia and its stage using these simple criteria. However, no standard treatment has established for cancer cachexia so far. Some new promising anti agents are being tested in the randomized control trials, such as anamorine hydrochloride as shown in this table 1. These studies repeatedly shown positive effect of anamorine on body weight, limb body mass, and appetite but no effect was shown on physical function, global quality of life, and survival. Another promising treatment option is a combination treatment of classic anti-inflammatory medications, including progestins, salidomide, EPA, and NSAIDs in Table 2. Several Phase 3 trials showed that they were potentially effective for improving body weight and limb body mass without severe toxicities. But the best combination has not yet been established. We also focused on the importance of non-pharmacological interventions, especially the multimodal regimens combining exercise and nutritional intervention. We introduced some of promising ongoing trials in this table three. However, we realized that there are several hurdles in conducting clinical trials in patients with cachexia. First, vulnerability of cachectic cancer patients lead to poor recruitment, retention, and compliance. Second, a lack of widely accepted endpoints impedes the research progress. To date, there is no consensus in clinically relevant outcomes among researchers, pharmaceutical companies, and the regulatory authorities. This is the urgent problem to be resolved in this area. Finally, we propose a future direction of cancer cachexia care that may be combined with both pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions that needs to be studied as early as possible and should not be too much for patients to avoid dropouts. 
Please read a full paper to get the detailed information of this review. I thank all the staff and investigators in my division and great mentors in Japan. And thank you for your attention.